hey guys welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm doing a pretty detailed silk press video i wanted to focus on the products and methods i use to avoid damage while i do my hair so i hope you guys enjoy and don't forget to like comment and subscribe and let's get started first i'm going to talk about the products that give me the best results remember everyone's hair is different so this is just my opinion but starting off with shampoo i like to use something that's cleansing but also moisturizing that way the moisture will leave a nice shine on your hair but it also has to be cleansing enough to remove residue and build up because that will lead to heat damage more quickly so one of my favorites is the way fine hair shampoo and conditioner this one is very gentle on my hair and moisturizes really well while removing buildup this one is on the price your side but it always leaves my hair looking and feeling really healthy so i definitely think it's worth it next up is my function of beauty shampoo and conditioner i feel like since this product is catered to my hair goals i can't really go wrong using it and every time i've used it for my silk presses my hair is always extremely shiny and soft so for a more affordable option, another favorite of mine is the Tresemme Moisture Rich Shampoo and Conditioner. It's not really the healthiest option for your hair, but those of you who don't straighten your hair often, I think it works perfect for a silk press. It does exactly what it says and it gives my hair a lot of moisture and I consistently get good results every time I've used it. This is a pretty recent find for me, but if your hair is suffering from some damage like mine is, I 100% recommend the Nexus Damage Healing Shampoo and Conditioner. It has protein in it to strengthen hair and keratin, which is good for smoothing. So I'm, I'm actually using these products today since I've been OD on straightening my hair and I am suffering from some damage. So y'all will see how they work. So these are just a couple examples of products to avoid when doing a silk press. The first being anything that says detox or deep cleanse because this will dry your hair out a lot which leads to your hair being frizzy. The next type of products you should avoid are natural and curly hair products because a lot of them have oils in them and they can weigh your hair down and leave residue which isn't good for heat styling. So y'all know I love a good DIY mask and if you need a refresher on one just go watch one of my old videos but I've been trying out different ones lately and the first one I really like because obviously the bottle is a hot mess is the IGK 3 minute hydration hair mask. This one adds a lot of moisture and it's very easy to use. You can have it in your hair while you wash your body in the shower and you can use it often to keep your hair pretty healthy next is the nexus damage healing mask treatment like i said this is perfect for people who already have heat damage or dry and brittle hair because this is going to strengthen your hair and prepare it for heat styling next is the matrix manuka honey extract hair mask and this is a pick-me-up for my hair the consistency is really thick which is how i like my mask because i can coat my hair really good and my hair feels extremely soft and hydrated after each use so i highly recommend this mask if you haven't tried it already this last product isn't really a mask but it's the igk amla Amla, I don't know how to say that, oil top coat. And I like to mix this in with my conditioner just to give my hair some added shine. After I shampoo and condition, I like to use a spray and serum combo. So IGK Good Behavior works as a heat protectant, detangler, frizz protection, etc. And I like to pair it with the IGK Crybaby, which is a frizzed control serum. Both of these products work really well and don't weigh my hair down. I also like to pair the It's a 10 Miracle Leave-In Spray with the John Frieda Frizzies. This is my favorite combo. I just don't have the Frizzies right now because my sister borrowed it. But I always use these two together and it gives me amazing results every single time. Okay, so now I'm going to show the full silk press process that I do on my hair to avoid damage. I'm using the Matrix Curl Can Dream Shampoo, which is a deep cleansing shampoo because I haven't washed my hair in a couple weeks and I wanna get the residue off before I go in with a mask. I always focus my shampoo on my scalp and I just go in circular motions. Then I run the shampoo down the rest of my hair very gently, avoiding any friction so that I don't cause any breakage. And then once I rinse everything out completely, I'm gonna squeeze excess water out and then I'm gonna go in with a mask. So I always like to do a mask when I do a silk press. I just feel like the results are better. So I use two packs of the Nexus mask. They are really cheap. They're like $3 at Target. And I'm working in four sections and just making sure I coat my hair really nicely. The instructions say work from the middle of your hair down, but I like to put the mask all the way up to my roots. So once everything is fully coated, I'm gonna put my hair in a shower cap and apply heat for about five minutes. If 
you guys have a hooded dryer or a heat cap, then just sit under it for five minutes, but I don't. So I'm using my Tymo Hypersonic hair dryer. I'm using the diffuser attachment and putting it on the highest heat and airflow. And I'm just going to move the dryer around the shower cap and apply heat. Just be careful. I don't know what temperature shower caps melt, but plastic does melt. So just be sure to keep the dryer moving in circular motions and don't get it too close to the cap. So after five minutes of applying heat, I'm going to rinse out my mask. I'm putting a little bit of water first, and while the mask is still in my hair, I'm going to detangle. I like to detangle when I have a lot of conditioner in my hair because it just avoids breakage. It's way easier to brush out tangles and everything like that. So I think it's best that you guys always detangle whenever there's a lot of product in your hair. Then I'm just rinsing out the mask completely, and I'm going to move on to shampooing and conditioning my hair. Again, I'm using the Nexus Damage Healing Shampoo because my hair is suffering a little bit right now. I'm going to try to stop using heat as much as I have been lately, but for now, this is just going to have to work. So I like to shampoo twice because it makes sure you get all of the oil and buildup off of your hair. The cleaner your hair is, the less damage you'll have in the end. So I'm focusing on my roots and then just dragging the shampoo down the length of my hair. It's really important to be very gentle with your hair during the shampoo process, especially mine because it breaks easily and we're already going to be applying a lot of heat. So anything you can do to avoid damage and breakage during this part is is key and again after the first shampoo just follow those same steps and shampoo your hair a second time I usually stick to two shampoos but if you guys want to do three you can it all just depends on how much buildup you have on your hair and how dirty your hair is at the time so just squeezing out all the water and I'm gonna go in with the conditioner so I like to use a lot of conditioner because I want every strand to be fully coated and once I have the conditioner applied, I like to brush through my hair to evenly distribute the product. I really focus on every single strand of my hair being conditioned and I just feel like that's really important because you want to make sure all of your hair is hydrated because you'll get the best results that way. And then a little extra step that I do, I take my ends and kind of rub them all throughout my hair. And this is just to make sure my entire hair all the way up to my roots is getting enough conditioner. I really want everything to be evenly distributed, like I keep saying, but that's a really important to me. So then I'm taking my Amla top coat and applying that while I still have conditioner on. I don't use too much of this because it is an oil and I don't want to weigh my hair down. And after that sits on my hair for about three minutes, I'm making sure to rinse everything completely. So after my hair is shampooed and conditioned, I'm going in with my spray and serum combination when my hair is soaking wet. This is just my preference. I feel like the product penetrates my hair better when it's wet than when it's dry. So I just apply a little bit like this much all throughout my hair. Make sure you guys don't use a lot of these products because it will make your hair greasy and it will be stiff and everything so again i'm gonna brush through my hair to make sure everything is evenly distributed and i'm twisting up my hair into four twists and i'm gonna let it air dry a little bit so how much time i have determines how much i let it air dry but i recommend anywhere from 40 to 70 percent the more you let it air dry the less heat you have to use but you don't want it to be completely dry because it'll be harder to manipulate your hair might start to tangle up more so while you're blow drying you'll get breakage so just make sure your hair isn't 100% dry but you can get it to about 70% so I always split my hair into four sections you guys can split it into more or less just depending on how much hair you have how thick your hair is and things like that and while I blow dry I like to use this ceramic paddle brush and this type of brush helps in smoothing out and straightening out your hair because the ceramic on the brush heats up so you have heat coming from both directions so the blow dry to me is probably the most important part because the better you blow dry the less work you have to do with the flat iron so on this step be sure to really take your time feel free to use the highest heat setting the highest airflow and get your hair as straight as you can even if it takes like 30 to 40 minutes it's really important to get your hair as straight as possible with the blow dryer it just helps make the straightening easier you don't have to use as much heat when you straighten you can use less passes so once my hair is pretty straight or as straight as it can get then i'm going to move on to straightening my hair 
So today I'm using my Babyliss Prima 3000 and I just got this flat iron around Christmas. I love it because it goes all the way to 465 degrees, which is kind of scary. So if you're a newbie to all of this, please use one of the lower heat settings or lower temperatures because you can easily burn your hair. All right, so for the actual straightening part, I always straighten my hair in four big sections and I separate pretty small pieces so that I don't have to do too many passes. And I am using the chase method. I always use this and this will avoid the flat iron pulling out pieces of your hair. And it's also going to evenly distribute heat to each strand of hair. So you guys will see throughout the video, I usually do three to four quick passes on my roots, uh, making sure I don't hold the flat iron closed for too long. And then I pass the iron down the rest of my hair. And once I get to the end, you guys will see, I tend to do one more pass down the second half of my hair. This is completely optional because it obviously will lead to more heat damage because there's more heat being applied. But I'm pretty anal about how straight I want my hair, so... That's why I just want to make sure it's bone straight, but your hair should straighten in one pass and that's all that's really necessary. And I'm going to let you guys just watch me straighten some pieces of my hair in real time, but some quick tips I have to avoid breakage and damage during the straightening process is to just make sure each piece is thoroughly detangled before going over it with the flat iron. If there's tangles, you're going to snag your hair, you're going to rip pieces of hair out, and it's just not going to get the heat evenly distributed throughout your hair. Also, make sure you aren't moving the iron too quickly because it can snag your hair pretty easily. I have this in real time so you guys can see how slow I move the iron. So just slow and steady passes will allow you one pass to get each piece straight. If you do it too quickly, you'll notice your hair isn't getting as straight as it could. And you might need to do like two to three passes. And like I said, I know I'm doing a couple passes on each piece, but I'm not really afraid of heat damage. If you are, again, one slow and steady pass is more than enough to get your hair straight. Just make sure you're, you know, going slowly and your hair definitely will get straight in one pass. If it's not, you guys can go in even smaller pieces than I'm doing. It's obviously going to take longer, but if you're trying to avoid heat damage, it's better to just go slow, have patience, and you'll definitely be fine. I recommend straightening your hair probably, if you want to keep your hair straight often, probably once a month. That's usually what I do. Recently, I've been straightening it probably like two times a month, which is too much, but I've just Obviously, I got a new flat iron. I've been trying out new products. So, and like I said, I'm not really afraid to damage my hair a little bit. As you guys saw, it was more damaged than it has been. Um, but if you stick to once a month, then you definitely should be able to avoid heat damage. Just follow the necessary steps and be really gentle and careful with your hair. Everyone's hair is different. So if you notice you get heat damage after straightening your hair once, I definitely would lessen the amount of times a year you straighten your hair. Now I'm using edge control. I'm just taming my edges, getting rid of flyaways. And I got this new edge control from my local beauty supply. So it should be at the beauty supply near you. Um, it's way better than the edge booster. The edge booster tends to get really flaky. This one doesn't do that. Um, so I definitely recommend. And now I'm just putting hairspray to hold my hair into place and that's pretty much it i hope you guys enjoyed this video i'm just going to show you guys what my hair looks like recently i have been getting like consistently good silk presses i don't know if my hair is just becoming more heat trained or if it's the products that i'm using and the method that i'm using but i have been able to get really good results every time i do my hair so i hope you guys enjoyed i hope you learned something um comment down below more videos you want to see from me i love you guys so much thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.